Next up is Ebony Madden, who is going for the sympathy vote here today. <laughs> Don't succumb to that. <laughs> so this is the uh, second concept being renewed. It is the title of the Genome Research Experiences to Attract Talented Undergraduates into Genomic Fields to Enhance Diversity. And Ebony Maiden is Program Director in the Division of Genomic Medicine. She will present the concept. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So as Rudy um, pointed out, I am here to present um, the possible renewal of the GREAT program on behalf of our NHGRI extramural training team. So just to give you an overview of the program goals is to provide exposure to genomics research to undergraduate students who are enrolled at minority serving institutions and institutions that are in IDEA eligible states. And those are states that don't receive a significant amount of NIH funding. So specifically, the program supports um, activities that focus on research experiences and courses for skills development. And the program requires collaborations um, with research intensive institutions or organizations that have a prominent genomics research training environment. So um, the approach is um, the research experiences should be full time in the summer and part time um, during the academic year. They would be primarily at the research intensive institution, although they can be at the applicant institution. And the courses can be um, between the partner um, institutions. The research focus is all of NHGRI's um, genomic research areas. And um, the eligible students have to at least complete one academic year. And the um, application has to have a mentoring plan that includes technical and career um, skills. Um, other requirements of the program, um, they have to submit a plan to enhance diversity, an evaluation plan. Um, they have to have an advisory committee. And then they have to name the participating faculty members in the labs um, and describe their research where the students would be placed for those research experiences. So these are the um, grantees that we have funded so far. We've had um, two rounds and funded two applications each round. Um, the, we have really strong partnerships. California State University, they're collaborating with um, University of California, Santa Cruz. University of Puerto Rico is actually collaborating with eight institutions, including Harvard, UPN, UT Southwestern, um, Johns Hopkins, to name a few, Baylor. Um, Prairie View is collaborating with Texas A&M, and the Metropolitan State University of Denver is um, collaborating with the University of Colorado at Denver. We are planning to fund one to two more applications in this fiscal year, but that has yet to be determined. So we are not planning any significant changes um, to the um, notice of funding opportunity but I'm happy to have any suggestions that you have. And my presentation is short. I would like to um, thank you, and um, I'm open for questions and comments. Um, I know Kyle and Nancy are going to lead off the discussion. Um, I've had a chance to talk with some of the uh, students in this program um, previously, and they are super cool people, and they are doing cool work. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to say. I just think this is a great program. The money is well spent supporting these students and hopefully creating a, a pathway towards, uh, you know, working in genomics. So I'm 100% supportive. Thank you, Kyle. I also am. And I, I would say there were um, some short presentations, I think, by some of the, um, the trainee groups at the um, NHGRI training meeting that were great. And I mean, I, I also have talked with some of them. I would say the program is not <coughs> absolutely um, novel. There have been partnership programs like this um, funded in a variety of ways and circumstances that I've also seen work really well. So I, I think the concept is good and proven in a number of other contexts. Um, so I'd really love to see this program continue. 
Thank you, Nancy. Other comments from council? whether you <clears throat> actively obtain feedback. I mean, anecdotally, Kyle and Nancy have, but have, has the program been in touch with the awardees and see how things are going? So I have actually had a lot of conversations that we, um, I site visited the first two institutions um, this last summer and met with all the students and um, went to their research well, with UC Santa Cruz, I went to UC Santa Cruz with them and met with their host labs. And um, so it was really exciting. A lot of the students had not thought about genomics as their career until they entered the program. Um, at UC, um, the ones at California State University, there were mostly um, computer science students who were just going to go straight into industry. Um, but now they've really, this has opened up their eyes. Um, for the University of Puerto Rico um, students, they have been amazing. They actually started doing the research at University of Puerto Rico just to um, open them up to research. And then the next summer, they're going with their partner institutions. And actually, I'm still interacting by email with the students who are really loving the program, have um, started. It was a social science student that is now really wanting to get into genomics research, and she's the one that's placed at Johns Hopkins. And so she's doing some gene environmental research. So yes, we are um, keeping in touch with the students, and they're doing amazing things. This program is really, right now, is, I think, increasing that representation. We'll see what happens later on. I also meant the uh, two institutions. The oh, how, uh, how do they continue to? How are they uh, interacting? Oh, so it. Depends on it. So I know California State University and UC Santa Cruz, they have a really strong partnership. Actually, um, the person who is the program director at UC Santa Cruz goes back and forth, and they have a lot of other programs that they work with together. Um, at University of Puerto Rico, it's eight different institutions. So it really depends on the institution. But there is collaborations um, among them and where they're interacting and actually looking at the pipeline of the new students coming and um, making sure that they have that placement. For the other programs, they're just starting out. This summer will be their first um, time with the research experiences. So the Prairie View and Texas A&M, this is a new partnership. So hopefully that will continue. The one in Denver, they've had partnerships before. But this one, actually, in genomics. So it, it depends on the program about their collaboration and interaction. But I think this has strengthened it. And I know there has been talk, especially at the training meeting, of continuing um, the network. And we're actually talking with um, SEGS and its um, Genomic Technology Coordinating Center about um, increasing that network for the students as well. In other words, you don't see the need to tweak the um, RFA, the not funding for, announcement? Not for the collaboration, no. It's, it's really strong because they have to work across for um, at least two years. And so um, the um, PIs have a really strong connection with the laboratories. And so that has not been a concern at all. Tim, go ahead. How has the um, application response rate been to this? So that's a good question. We've had about four to five applications per receipt date, and we funded half of them. Um, I can say um, Rudy is the one that does the review. The review has been really, really well, where they're really looking at the mentorship plans and making sure the students have a really um, sound research foundation, and um, they score it accordingly. They think that the students are not going to be prepared or have the courses necessary. They really um, bring that out in their review. Um, and so we're, we're doing outreach. We've um, had webinars to let um, MSIs know about the program. So hopefully the um, application rate will continue or even increase in the future. And have there I, been... I, Oh, I'm sorry. I've already um, fielded a number of calls with interest in the next receipt date as well. Have there been any, I've heard this in the past, have there been issues with MSIs not having the grants infrastructure to apply? Has that been an issue or no? Not okay. with 
the great program. Great. Neither one of at least the ones that has scored well and we've considered for funding, we haven't had any issues with their grants offices. I think my question is actually are there institutions that are not applying because they don't have the grants infrastructure to do that? That is a good question because I will say on the webinar, I, after we did that outreach, I had a lot of people contact me, but they then did not submit applications. So that could be it. And I know Jen's at the uh, microphone. Yeah, I just wanted to say that in the Division of Extramural Operations, this is something we're thinking about and we're working on having um, interactions between our grant managers and the sponsored program offices at places that do not receive NIH funding to help them get that infrastructure. Yeah. I will say that with these programs that are new to NIH, I do have a lot of interaction as they're preparing the application and also refer them to grants management for questions. So it's a lot of back and forth to make sure that the applications come in and they're uh, meeting all the requirements. So. Is, there, is there a role that the partnering institute can play in that too, where they have more established offices or no? Well, the, they have to that. The applicant institution has to be the binary serving institution or right. the one at the idea states. I know um, that they do have help um, from the partner institutions where they help in writing the grant application, but actually the, the grants office um, from the mi minority serving institution has to be the one to submit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Nancy? Nancy. Now, I would just note, note though that um, NIH does make a number of really useful videos for submitting NIH grants that are very appropriate for people who've never submitted NIH grants. And when we've done any grants that involve this kind of partnership, it's been an inc incredibly useful thing to be able to give links to, to people. But it's also <laughs> turned out to be a really useful thing for onboarding new people coming into grants administration at our own institution. So these are really good videos and extremely helpful for people who've not done it before. European, American, everybody. So it's, um, they should publicize those links better because I got them from NHGRI staff at a meeting, at the training meeting, I think. Um, and it's, it's really helpful. Other questions about this NOFO? If not, can I have a motion to approve? Second, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Anyone wishing to abstain? Okay, thank you, Ebony. And next up is uh, Lucia Hindorf. She's gonna present the concept called NHGRI Predoctoral to Postdoctoral Transition Award for a Diverse Genomics Workforce. And Lucia is a program director in the Training Diversity and Health Equity Office. Uh, 